All right, so welcome to our very first video on 3D calculus, or um, I guess this is more just an intro into, three, into 3D, three dimensions. So I really, in this video, want to just give you guys an understanding of the basics of 3D. So what we're just going to do in this video, we're just going to talk about um, orientating ourselves. Probably not spelling this right, orientate. orientating ourselves in 3D. Um, so this one, we're just going to talk about how to think about stuff in 3D, really. Uh, and we're gonna, just going to be in, introducing the axes. I really recommend you stick through and watch this whole thing because um, this is probably the most confusing part about 3D, 3D calculus or 3D geometry or 3D anything, really. So... Now, why is this so confusing? So I think the reason why this is so confusing, at least for me, was because when we had two dimensions, um, when we had two dimensions, everything was, it was really easy to describe everything and things are pretty clear and straightforward. So if we had a problem, like in you know our pre-cal courses or just in any course really, if we had a problem where you know, we're throwing a ball, you know, let's make this axis a little bit longer. Um, oh God, we don't want it bendy. Okay, wait, we'll get this right third time or we're just leaving it. Boom. Okay, more or less right. It's a bit cut off, but oh well. Oh, well, let me just... Okay, <laughs> now we're ready to talk about this. Um, this is this one's a little bit wonky, but okay, whatever, let's talk about it. So um, in, uh, in 2D calculus, when we had something like a problem that describes the path of a ball or, you know, a rock or something being thrown in general... It's, uh, it's pretty easy to draw a graph. It looks like this and to really under understand pretty quickly what's going on. So, you know, from this graph, we know, okay, it started here. It ended over here. Um, I'm, if I'm, I'm using the blue if you can't tell. Um, and it, you know, and at this point over here, it, it was at its highest. Um, uh, and, you know, there's, there's stuff like this we can... Oh, well, we can say that, you know, for this long, it... Uh, it if this, if, I wrote Z, my, my bad, it should be X over here. And you know, depending on what our X axis says, this is either time or it's distance horizontally. Um, and you know, depending on what our Y axis is, this is height or it could be something else. Usually it's height, height. Um, so it's pretty easy to tell, right? Our Y axis was, uh, is usually going to be height when we're talking about stuff in the physical world. Um, now the thing that gets confusing of the, the hard part about 3d is, uh, is, is this leap to the third dimension. Um, you know, in this case, uh, in, you know, for a lot of people, you know, um, intuitively when you first hear about 3d, it's like, you know, well, Hey, I'm, I live in the third dimension. What's so hard about it? Well, the hard part really is is uh, translating the stuff on paper. That's, I'd say, probably the hardest part is, you know, here if we have something that moves, um, here we have something in two dimensions, and we're if we're talking about something that happens in two dimensions and we want to describe it in a two-dimensional medium, which is what this drawing is, which is what, you know, drawing on pen and paper is, it's a two-dimensional drawing, it's a two-dimensional medium. Doing that, you know, trans going from what we see happen in two dimensions to what to describing it in two dimensions is is really easy we can actually draw a literal example right um it could be a scenario where you know um where you know say we describing the motion of a bug across my screen there is no bug thankfully um but for describing the motion of a, of a bug along my screen we say this is um up on the screen and this is sideways on the screen we could you know quite literally draw the the path of the bug, right? We could trace it over and this could really be a one-for-one -one depiction. Um, the hard part about 3D is you can't really do a one-to-one -one depiction, right? So, um, you know, how do I, how do I describe the path of a ball that goes up and that goes sideways and sideways at the same time, right? How do I draw that? Well, it's really hard. So, you know, one thing that I don't recommend doing is I don't recommend any of us uh, deciding now to, to to become fine artists and deciding now to become you know still life uh, still life artists uh, because um, I mean while it's certainly fun when you get bored on math problems it's it's definitely not going to uh, 
not going to help you get a better grade in this class. In fact, it might do the opposite. Um, you don't want to spend too much time drawing. So what we do to talk about 3D is, well, the first thing is, you know, we have a new axis, a completely new axis. Oops, I moved my book over when I drew that. So we have our new axis. I hate, I hate, I really hate doing these drawings because I'm a, I'm really a perfectionist um, when it comes to drawings at least. And this stuff always really bugs me. Oh gosh, okay, you know what? We're just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, um, all right, so we have, we have a wholly new axis. Let's give us some more space between these two so they're not right on top of each other. Um, we have a whole new axis. Uh, I've said that four or five times now, I realize. Okay, so we have our z-axis over here, which is our brand new one. And z is the one that's telling us to go up or down. Um, we're just gonna focus on this little picture right here. We're not gonna talk about down just quite yet. Um, now, for those of you that have used any kind of 3D modeling software, um, or those of you who have used 3D graphers or anything like that, you might be pretty familiar with this uh, with this axis. So, um, you know, Z is telling you to go up, um, X is, and Y are both sideways. And if you're wondering, um, yes, this here is the conventional um, conventional orientation. Sorry, there's some background noise going on. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but uh, unfortunately, I don't have a very good sound setup, so I just have to put the power through, I guess. Um, so this is our conventional orientation, and so the the reason why uh, the first thing that we want to do when we talk about you know uh, modeling real world stuff in 3D is we want to uh, really we want to orient stuff with this convention in mind. So the uh, the simpler we make our drawings and the simpler we make our modeling, um, the easier it's going to be. Um, and also, the closer we stick to conventions, I think at least, the uh, the easier it is to visualize stuff um, in, a, in a 3D way. So, um, and what, what do I mean by this? Um, well, for me at least, I'm not sure how much it applies to you, but I'm really making this video for anyone that thinks just like me or similar to the way I think. But for me at least, when I first uh, was introduced to 3D, uh, 3D graphs, you know, the challenging part for me was, well, you know, what is up, right? Um, because, you know, in two dimensions, uh, when we had something that was, you know, y, x, it's pretty clear that, you know, y is always up. Um, you know, we always took, if we're talking about, you know, the object's path, we didn't really care how far back or forth it moved. Um, if we wanted to learn about back or forth, we draw a whole new graph where, you know, y would be how far it moves, uh, you know, up relative to the page or the where the camera is oriented, right? So if we're talking about a projectile uh, going in this arc, here we're talking about Y being up, as in up towards the sky, and X being, you know, time or distance, right? Um, and then if we wanted to, you know, figure out how far left or right it moved, we would draw a new graph. And, you know, we'd say the origin is the guy, throw the person throwing the projectile, and, um, we draw a line over here that says, okay, this is, uh, let's say this, this direction, this quote unquote up, um, is going to be how far, uh, up the field. For example, let's say this person's standing in a field. This is going to be how far up the field they're throwing it. And this far is going to be how far along the field they're throwing it. Right. Let's say this is a football field and these are our yard lines basically. Right. Um, and this is just along the field. It's, 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 it was really easy to break stuff up, up, apart this way, to really visualize it clearly, right? Um, and you do, that's the kind of point, that's the point I'm trying to drive across. But in 3D, for me at least, the confusing part was, you know, say we have uh, a bunch of planets orbiting each other, right? Um, in space, if we're talking about space, um, the, the hard part is, you know, uh, if we're talking about space, we're, we don't really have an up or a down, right? In true 3D space, um, like we're talking, you know, beyond the Earth's atmosphere, um, there is, you know, nothing telling us what's up and what's down. Um, if there's no gravity telling, like, you know, if there's no gravity telling us which way is down, well, what do we say is down? Um, you know, we can say that, hey, well, this could be our Z axis over here, and this could be our X, and this could be our Y. I mean, who cares, right? Um, if you go along this path, it becomes, uh, 
you know, actually, if any of you have read Ender's Game, this was uh, this is one of the neat things that uh, Ender uh, Ender uh, talked about, right? Um, in his little in that level uh, in the part of the book where he's uh, shooting people in uh, in the space chamber. Um, you know, he, he figures out that there's a, that this whole idea is going to be is completely abstract, right? That up is not up, um, sideways is not sideways. You know, the orientation that matters is which way is, you know his laser gun is pointing, right? Um, anyways, if, you know that's uh, if you haven't read the book, um, I highly recommend reading the book. I don't, I'm not really sure the movie does it justice, to be personally perfectly honest. But um, but so. The way we we as mathematicians want to think about this, and as physicists and scientists or whoever we are, um, we really want to think about it as you know just conventionally as as conventionally as possible because sticking to conventions makes stuff easier. So if we're trying to describe something in space, we're just gonna say up is up the way we think about it, right? The way you the way you're drawing it on paper, um, up is up, whatever way up is to you. Um, I always like to think about it as, uh, you know, up is going to be uh, the direction of gravity, um, at least if we're talking about something moving, right? Um, it makes it, it makes it simpler. It makes it easier to deal with, which is really the, the end goal of using math to talk about problems um, in using 3D in general. So we have our new axis over here. Now, just like with any new axis, right? Um, or with any axis, there's going to be a positive and a negative region. So this drawing over here does a pretty good example. But um, before we get really scared of before we get really scared of that drawing, I want to ease us into it. So tease you a little bit with the drawing. So we have our z, our x, and our y's over here. Um, and just like yeah, so like I said, just like with any. Uh, just like, sorry, not with any graph, just like in 2D, right? So in 2D, if you look over here, um, we had our our y-axis, and then we had our x-axis over here, and then we had our negative y's, and then over here we had our negative x's. And the same thing goes for 3D. Over here we have our negative x's, over here we have our negative y's, and down here we have our negative z's. So... Now that you see all these three axes, you know, the hard part, as you quickly see, you know, drawing stuff in 2D on paper becomes really, really challenging. Because if I put, you know, a circle over here, you know, where is it, right? Is it below? Is it in the negative Z axis? Is it in the positive Z axis? Is it coming at you? Or is it really far away from you? It's really, really hard to, to talk about this kind of stuff. Um, but... Uh, but so the, what, what I recommend, you know, what I recommend you, you really do if you're having the same, you know, uh, headache about visualizing stuff in 3d is one, um, the first thing, first thing is, uh, forget about it. Um, that's really the best thing is, uh, just, just realize that stuff is in 3d, um, and try to make stuff as simple as possible. You know, up is up. Don't try to think of, you know, X could be up or Y could be up technically, um, just think about, you know, Z is up. Um, that's, that's the way you really should approach it. Don't worry about, you know, it's, uh, how, how arbitrary and abstract that stuff is. Um, the other thing is, uh, if, if, you know, if this helps you, you get out some 3d software. Um, I think blender is, uh, is free. Um, it's a free modeling software you can use. They're not paying me to say this. Um, I wish they were, um, but you get, download that, get that out, play with it a little bit. You know, that could help you, um, understand how, the, how this works a little bit better. Um, that's certainly what I did. Um, you also, you know, get a 3D graph around if you don't want to download something, you know, pull up a 3D graph and, you know, spin it around a little bit, right? Get a get a feel for what 3D looks like and what 3D works, um, as, as ironic as it sounds, because, you know, we all live in a 3D world. <laughs> um, but, um, but anyways, so um, just like in two dimensions, right, in... In this graph over here, we're pretty familiar that there's uh, there's four quadrants, right? Um, and in 3D, there are uh, eight octants because we add a whole another dimension. And they are, um, uh, this is kind of hard to see from this photo, uh, from this image that I have, but um, I'm gonna show you how they're labeled. So if this is our X, and this is our, uh, I'm already messing up, see. Um, this is our X, this is our Y, this is our 
minus x, and this is our minus y. So if we look at this top down, um, do we look at a bird's eye view of the scenario? If we look at a bird's eye view of the scenario, um, they're labeled in the following fashion. So you start with your positive, po everything here, and this is a scenario where z is positive. All right, so we're looking at this at this image right here. Uh, we're looking at this thing top down. What the heck is going on? Uh, we're looking at we're looking at this top down. So z is positive, and we're looking straight down at the axes. Um, so, and this is two D as well, kind of. That's what that's the way I want you to think about it. So this dot that I'm drawing, it's not going through. It's resting on the plane of z equals zero. So z equals zero would be, you know, at the origin for z. Oh, goodness, I had the eraser selected. z equals zero would be at the origin for z. So um, these are these points here are lying flat. So that's the way I want you to think about it. I don't want you to overthink it. It's not going through. It's lying just flat. You're looking at something, that, you're looking at something that's flat. So top down, you're looking at something that's flat. So number one is right here. Um, it starts where everything is positive. So in this, in this octant over here, um, you can go all the way up or you can go um, all the way to the floor is how I guess I would describe it. Um, between, you know, infinity upwards and the floor, everything in this octant is going to be positive. So X and Y and Z here are positive. Then we go to 2, which is going to be negative X, um, Y and Z are positive. Then we go to 3, uh, where uh, X and Y are negative and Z is still positive. And then we go to 4, where X and where x is positive and y is negative and z is positive. Now let's flip it upside down. So this is going to be a bottom a bottom up view. So I guess if you're a, if we were a bird a second ago, we're a fish now. Um, so let me uh, move these around to make this drawing a little bit clearer. So I guess this is fish perspective, right? I mean, this is kind of stupid. I'm, I'm just imagining, you know, if you're fish, you can, you know, swim under it and look up, right? Whereas a bird, you, have to, you always have to fly over it and look down. Um, all right. So that wasn't a joke, by the way. You don't have to laugh. <laughs> I know this, no, this is funny. Um, Okay, so we have our y, our x, um, our minus x, and our minus y over here, right? So um, in this case, you know what? Let's put it over here so you guys can you know, still see what's going on with this graph because I don't want you. I want you to be able to tie these two together. Um, so in this case, we have. Um, minus z. Z is negative for everything over here. Because um, we're looking at it again, remember from the bottom. So uh, in this case, we're going to go sequentially again, right? So if we look back in the first one, uh, we went counterclockwise, right? Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, here we're going to be going uh, counterclockwise again, but starting at five. So five, six, seven, eight. And there you go. So yeah, those are our, um, so th that's that in terms of axes. Um, let's see how long this video is. And if it's too long, we might cut.